Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to install the new TFL half and half axle blocks, now with only 420 calories. For this, uh, you'll be needing a Phillips head screwdriver, quarter inch Allen wrench, five millimeter Allen, I like to have two of them if you don't have uh, a vise, and an eighth inch Allen, ideally on some sort of screw gun or powered device. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take a screwdriver and remove the little screws that protect the wires on your existing axle blocks. If you have stock rails, you're also going to want to remove the three little screws that hold in the wires to the rails. When you've got the screws off, just remove the little covers. Second step is to remove your front bumper and controller box cover. Please do not skip this step. Uh, you'll see why later. Now that you have the controller box cover off, just set that and the front bumper aside and remove the connector from the controller box that connects to your battery. You get a little flat head in there. Now you're gonna to wanna to take your quarter inch Allen and just unbolt and remove the bolts that bolt your axle block into your rails and make sure to just set those aside because you will be uh, reusing them. If you have fender deletes, you are gonna wanna remove those. It's just gonna make it a lot easier to uh, work on. And the last thing we're gonna remove here is the inner hub bolts and the axle blocks with our five millimeter Allen wrenches. I like to just grab two wrenches and just loosen them against each other. As you remove these inner hub bolts, you're gonna to wanna to set them aside because you will be reusing them. All right, so once you've got those two bolts removed, you can go ahead and remove the original axle block. The half and half axle blocks will be replacing this piece. So you can take your half and half. I like to do the motor side first. You'll notice the motor side has just a cutout in one direction. You wanna make sure that when you put that on, it faces towards your controller box. You can see here the wire is glued in towards one side of the axle. And you want, uh, you're gonna to need to turn the axle by 90 degrees so that these two bolts are now up and down and you want this glue side to be towards the controller box. So you're just gonna slide this in here, make sure that your bolt holes line up, and just slide the axle block um, right onto the axle. This, this step may, may um, take a little bit of finessing. Just take your time and make sure that you don't um, clamp the wire uh, as you're um, pushing the block onto the axle. Uh, at this point, you can reinstall the same inner hub bolts that you took out with your five millimeter Allen key. Now that these inner hub bolts are fairly tight, I like to flip it around and do the other side, the battery side. And as you're installing the battery side, just make sure that this curved side and the more triangular side line up with the motor side. You want the same side to be up. And just line up those bolt holes and put the inner hub bolts uh, back in. At this point, um, and again, if you don't have a vise, uh, I like to use two five millimeter Allen keys and I like to just get them really tight uh, in the same way that I remove them. We can now take our battery wire and put it into this channel here. Uh, you'll notice the battery wire naturally has a sort of flat edge. Uh, it really helps if you can just sort of twist <clears throat> twist a tiny bit to get that flat edge to sit uh, right in there. And at this point, just line the axle blocks back up. Uh, I might wanna just, you know, look around and make sure that the wires not, are not pinched anywhere. At this point, you can also plug the connector 
back into the controller box. And at this point, you take your original outer hub bolts and bolt them back in through the rails. I like to install all four of them relatively sort of tight before really cranking down on any one of them. Now that all four outer bolts are in, I like to just crank down, get them pretty tight. And just keep in mind, uh, if you are a much bigger person than me, uh, you do wanna definitely be careful. Uh, you can over tighten a steel screw into aluminum pretty, pretty easily. Me personally, I can crank down pretty much as hard uh, with one arm uh, with a wrench about this long. This step is optional depending on your setup. With this particular setup, uh, standard length W rails. The wire here um, is kind of in the perfect spot for this uh, cutout right here. If you are running shorter length rails, uh, you may need to cut this part of the controller box and just make sure that when you install this controller box back in that it is not pushing any sharp parts against the wires on either side. And if it is, you can always just cut a little section out of the cover. But this one, we don't need to do that. So we're just gonna make sure this connector is back in there and we're gonna button everything up. All right, this is the last step. Just bolt in uh, the bumper back in there. All right, everyone, that's it. We now have a half inch lift kit on this board. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy your half inch lift or drop kits as much as I have. Thank you for purchasing. Uh, we really want to see what you guys are doing with these half and half kits. So please tag us on Instagram if you've got any videos and float on my friends.